it's a manifestation of one of its ontological possibilities. That is, the orderliness itself had to have had the ontological possibility of life, and we're the proof of that. Now, if we wouldn't have been, we would never know that life could have been. But the fact that we are is the fact that we could know that the orderliness had to have had the metaphysical possibility of life. <clears throat> so that's um, Professor Anton responding to a couple of my videos about uh, the sort of crossroads that I see contemporary philosophy at between, on the one hand, a sort of eliminative materialism, and on the other hand, uh, a sort of evolutionary panpsychism. And, you know, Corey is uh, trying to say that there's a middle ground here, and I think he wants to argue that I'm sort of exaggerating the, um, the dichotomy here um, by trying to force people's hands to choose one extreme over the other. And I think Corey wants to affirm uh, what amounts to, I think it's a kind of linguistic idealism. You know, I hate to label things, but I think what Corey is suggesting is that, um, you know, as you just watched, we, we sort of find ourselves in this situation where in order to understand the universe, you know, the physical laws, the physical order that, um, you know, we find operating in our, our particular cosmic situation, um, that we need to be able to explain that in a way that, uh, well, is, is in some way inclusive of what's called the anthropic principle in cosmology, uh, which is this principle that, um, you know, right, basically, the human being alive on planet Earth today can only know the universe which was capable of producing it. So, you know, the fact that there are these seemingly finely tuned physical constants, these, you know, mathematical values that we plug into these equations that then um, give us a sort of model which is uh, comparable to that, the universe which we measure and observe around us, that, that the, the reason they are what they are is just because you know, it couldn't have been otherwise because, you know, here we are, the organisms that emerged from that process. We could only know that very process. Um, you know, it's a strange sort of solipsistic cosmology, I think. And ultimately, I don't, I don't believe that, that Corey wants to affirm this. You know, in the end, he sort of waves his hands and says he doesn't know uh, where the order of the universe came from. He doesn't know why there is a cosmos instead of a chaos. Why it is that order seems to win out over disorder. But that because there has, the, the, you know, because the universe has this order that um, it has, you know, produced life and that life has produced consciousness. So he's, you know, why is there order? We can't know, there's no reason, but life emerged, and out of life emerged mind, and mind asks for reasons and comes up with reasons. And I think Corey's trying to avoid, and I would agree with him here, try, he's trying to avoid a sort of theistic fundamentalism. Um, he's also trying to avoid a kind of materialistic uh, reductionism. And, you know, he's pushing back against my panpsychism, I think, um, because, well, you know, I don't recognize my own position in his caricature of panpsychism. So I would have to say more about what I think panpsychism is so that, you know, Corey and I can talk about what I'm <laughs> really trying to say instead of um, about... Uh, you know, some understanding of panpsychism, which is basically that it's a, f a form of pantheism. You know, I think Corey, Corey's description of panpsychism was in some ways in conflating it with theism by imagining a sort of background to the universe, a, a being that precedes the universe, 
um, you know, a conscious intelligence that uh, sets the universe into motion, gives it shape, you know, and then, you know, I think Corey recognizes what's important about panpsychism when he talks about participation, um, which begins to break down this, this dualism, which I think shouldn't be present in a true panpsychism, but nor is panpsychism a kind of monism. I think really, at least as I understand, as I articulate my own panpsychism, which draws a lot, um, uh, mostly upon the thought of Al Alfred North Whitehead, but also, you know, upon, upon, upon Schelling, um, you know, in his philosophy of nature, where, you know, there is a world soul, but the, that that world soul um, participates with all of the many finite individual souls um, embedded within and um, creatively participating in, in, in the universe. You know, the universe is all things, right? So the one is the many, um, which is to say that, you know, when we talk about the intelligence that shapes um, the unfolding of all things, you know, when we talk about this underlying cosmic order that makes possible life, that makes possible mind, we're not talking about something fixed, we're not talking about something imposed from eternity, we're talking about an intelligence that learns, an intelligence that is fundamentally historical, and in that sense, isn't resting upon some eter eternal fundament, some eternal foundation at all. You know, we recognize that reason and intelligence and order, that these aren't grounds, these aren't fundamental, um, you know, solid um, pedestals on which to stand to know the world in some certain remove disinterested way reason is never disinterested um, you know intelligence is always uh, relational knowledge is about building relationships and so knowledge is participatory uh, if we're going to have a science of the universe if we're going to have a cosmology uh, it's going to have to be a cosmology, which is just as um, aware of the spontaneous, the spiritual, the inward dimension of the universe as it is aware of, of the mechanical outward dimension of the universe. You know, there are immeasurables and there are measurables, and to understand one in the absence of the other, to try to eliminate one side or the other, I think only leads to metaphysical incoherence and inability to understand what it is we think we're actually talking about. You know, so we need a science of quality and a science of quantity. We need a science that includes the interior dimension of things, the creative dimension of things, the experiential dimension of things, and not just you know, the external dimension, the accidental dimension, the separated dimension of things. Both dimensions are real. We just need to incorporate both in order to understand the whole. And the whole is not, you know, this isn't evolutionary panpsychism, isn't a doctrine where God is some finished identity, some pre-unified intelligent designer that uh, created the best of all possible worlds from a position beyond the world you know in this sort of process ontology that i'm talking about um god is the poet of the world as whitehead puts it god is the fellow sufferer the the one who understands who is who who exists with all of us instead of um pre-exists beyond us A process theology uh, is an attempt to articulate a God that evolves with the universe, not a distant creator, but a co-creator, an ever-present uh, divine lore, sort of initial eros that guides all finite creatures towards a particular 
uh, realization of what is most beautiful, what is most good, and what is most true, but primarily what is most beautiful, right? What is most experientially rich. This is an aesthetic ontology um, that I'm trying to articulate here. Um, so, I guess, you know, Corey and I might not be that far apart because I'm curious to sort of know more about what he means by, by saying that orderliness, that the orderliness of the universe is a reflection of its intelligence. Um, what does that entail, you know, because to me that sounds a lot like the idea that there's a kind of world soul animating the motion of the beings, the stars, the planets, the galaxies, just like the, the cells, the plants, the animals, that all beings are guided by a sort of um, a soul, a flow of erotic energy that courses through earth and sky and back again, um, you know, a cosmic circuit that connects all things, that allows all things to breathe together, uh, as Plotinus put it. What is cosmic intelligence if not that? And I guess that's the question that I'd leave, um, that I'd end this video with for, for Corey to, uh, to begin um, throwing some ideas back at me. But I'm really enjoying this. Um, so please, Corey, continue. Um, and others who, who have their own ideas, join us. Let's see where we can get.